On today's Locked On Texan podcast, Kenyon Green is back at practice. Hear from Lovey Smith on Green's absence. Mo City's own Ross Blacklock and Cody had an opportunity to catch up. Talk camp and this upcoming season, Derek Singley may or may not play. We'll talk about all of that in today's episode of the Locked On Texan podcast. Cody, start the show. You are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to a Thursday edition, excuse me, to the Hmm. Locked On Texas Podcast, a part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm John Hickman, of course, joined by Cody Davis on the ground at the NRG Stadium. And uh, Keon Green back at practice. We're going to talk about that. However, guys, some bad news coming out of camp. Cornerback Tavier Thomas didn't mm. practice on Wednesday. Thomas pulled uh, a hamstring, or was it a quadricep, Cody? I'm hearing a couple of things out of camp. I, did I have was a, told that it was a hamstring. A hamstring. Uh, either way, he had an injury at practice, and uh, he will be out indefinitely. I think that's something we can talk about later in the show. MJ Stewart, where you at, baby? Hmm. Maybe your time. Uh, but 15 overall pick and the former AM Aggie, Keon Green, was back on the field for Houston on Wednesday after missing practice for the past week and a half or so. Missed time was due to a concussion, and this information was not made privy to the Texan media or anybody. It was kept in house. Uh, and it was not the leg injury. He was a full go at practice. Some positive signs coming out of camp for the offensive line. Cody, I think they need Green on the field. The left side was not as solid as we wanted to look. But what's going on with Keon Green at practice? Look, they need Keon Green, but at the same time, I'm still not 100% sold on the young man. Um, As you mentioned, he returned to practice on yesterday, and he ran majority of his time with the twos and the threes, and uh, I'm not sure if he's going to play on Friday. If anything, I'm pretty sure he's probably going to make his Houston Texans debut next week against the San Francisco 49ers. As a matter of fact, Lovey Smith did say on today that next week will be basically the preview of the Houston Texans 53-man roster because majority of the most important players, top players, and everybody else involved will take majority of the reps next week. Love that too. But, John, I haven't seen much from Keon Green. He has had some good days. He has had some bad days. But that's what expected for a rookie. I'm not going to write him off and call him a bust or anything like that as of right now. But what I would like to say is, over these over this next week or so, especially entering this last preseason game, I will be sure to keep a close eye on Green because, like I mentioned, I'm not sold as of yet, but it's still early, and this is a guy who almost missed two weeks' worth of training camp practice. Yeah, man, Lovey Smith was asked about playing, you know, the plans for playing Keon Green, and his response was eventually we'll get him out there. He mm-hmm. also was talking about left guard Max Sharpen and offensive lineman Justin McCray stating that a young – and he still mentioned Keon Green here, uh, a young player. We want every young player to take a rep, and it doesn't happen like that. But there is still time. Keon missed some time. But we have two more preseason games. As long as we get a player some action before that they've uh, that they've had a lot of practices with, so it's not just like we're throwing them out there cold turkey. We mm-hmm. kind of like – the way that he's going, but he was asked about Max Sharpen and Justin McCray. So I'm not creating speculation here, but I do think that the head coach wants his left guard out there. I don't think that he's fully satisfied with the play and, and not only in the game, but during practice of Max Sharpen and Justin McCray. He wants to see him, but I think he also understands we have to make sure that we get him ramped up. So I don't think we'll see Justin, not Justin uh, Britt, but, uh, Keon Green. Keon Green. I don't think we'll see him uh, this coming Friday game, but I do think we'll see him against the 49ers. Yeah, and look, I 100% agree with you. You know, with Green not being out there, you know, we all wanted to see this offensive line improve, and we all know over the last year or so, 
the interior offensive line has been the weakest point. And, you know, when the Houston Texans drafted Keon with that 15 number one overall pick, we thought he was going to be the guy to really help the interior. However, like I mentioned, I haven't seen a lot of green as of right now. John, when you was out there for training camp, I believe that was during the time he was out. So nobody, we don't, we, we can't really get a true feel of Keon Green, but everyone that I've talked to, the coaching staff, the players, you guys are going to hear Ross Blacklock a little bit later on in the show. Everyone who has been around Keon Green since he got drafted by this organization, um, they all speak highly of Keon. As you gear up for the fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job in the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word. That'll make your hiring the network that you need to help find people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on your candidates with the right skills and, ex and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you want to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Somebody is bound to find your job. So post your job on LinkedIn.com for free. And when you post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL, make sure that you are adding the locked on NFL for free, guys. Post it on LinkedIn for free. Of course, terms and conditions apply. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, Locked On Texans. Standing here with Mr. Ross Blacklock. Mr. Blacklock, how was practice today? Hot. It was, <laughs> hot. Uh, it was good, though, man. Guys flying around, um, just cleaning up things from last week, trying to improve on the stuff that we got to get better on. Uh, going into week two of preseason. Mm. I know, you know, you can't really go too much into the game but game plan, but after a great first preseason game against the New Orleans Saints, how will you evaluate this defensive line that did come away with five sacks? Yeah, just trying to trying to double it, honestly. Just each week trying to get better. Last week, you know, we just flipped the script. You know, last week didn't matter. This week, you know, it's a new goal. Uh, as far as guys, everybody in the room to what to do, just dominate the whole game. You know, that's our whole MO. So um, I think we'll be able to do that, just go with the game plan and just play hard. Yesterday we talked to Derek Rivers. You just mentioned it just now that, you know, you guys are still going to clean up a lot of things that you guys can get better at. As you head into the second preseason game against the um, Los Angeles Rams, what are some of the things you guys can basically improve on for this next preseason game? Uh, basically, just kind of like finishing our rushes. We had a lot of guys who was rushing and was, was even more close to the sack. Derek should have had three sacks. I think he could agree. A lot of guys should have had two. Um, some guys should have had one. You know, just improving those little little details. Um, just being more detailed with our alignments and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, just putting ourselves in a better position to make plays. Ross, you are going into your third season. How would you best describe your career up until this point? Um, it's a blessing, man. It's all mm -hmm. a blessing. It's a journey at the end of the day. Um, each and every day, I just pray I get better as a, as a player. I come out here try to put my best foot forward and be in the best position to uh, have a great career here. Um, and, just, you know, every day is trying to be a new day, trying to get better. Going into your third season, how would you what, – what are some of the intangibles you feel that you can improve on on that defensive side of the ball to, to continue improving? Um, just being versatile, um, available when they need me as far as playing whatever position uh, on the line um, and just being accountable with my teammates, trust, uh, putting the trust with those guys and letting them trust me whenever we're all out there together. Uh, as long as we all trust each other and, and trust our assignments, I think we'll, we'll make a lot of plays and win a lot of games. One thing I noticed about you when we had an opportunity to talk to you a couple of weeks ago, some of your other teammates talked about it. A lot of people talk about the camaraderie and the chemistry that surround this team this year. And, you know, unfortunately, when you got here in 2020, you know, the team began to go through a transition. How important is that to finally have that chemistry and camaraderie within the locker room? And also, how much do you believe that's actually going to benefit the team with more wins this season? Um, I think it would be – it's a good thing, obviously. Guys should – they have good chemistry. Teams should, good teams have good chemistry. Guys who are locked in with each other, guys who treat guys like family. 
nobody's bigger than anybody on this team. We all know that everybody's on the same level, um, and that's how we go about it every day. You know, um, it was it was it was hard the first year, you know, because you, you couldn't really. It was hard to lean on somebody, especially being a young player like myself. Um, but this year, you know, guys are it's like family here, man. Guys enjoy coming to work, seeing the guys, you know, just doing stuff on our free time together. Um, guys, even outside the facility, hang out, do stuff. Um, we we'll all go to like concerts or you know whatever whatever local around the city you know just spend time spending time with teammates it, it, it'll go a long way. You talk about how hard it was you know when you was a, a young rookie trying to lean on somebody. How do you actually use that as motivation to make sure that you are here for the rookies and the second year players? Yeah, I, like I said, I just try to be like a big bro to them, just uh, give them all the knowledge that I know so far that I can give because um, I want them to play good. I'm not gonna hold out on nobody. Uh, any tools that I have, I'm going to share that might help somebody that I wish I may have had. Um, and just keep being there for them because I know how it feels um, as a young player, how difficult it can be. Everybody does, you know, when you yeah. first uh, get in the league. But how difficult it is just to make that transition. And your eyes are just so big, you're, not, you're oblivious to everything. So um, I just want to be that, that, that escape build, a safe haven they can come to, talk to, if they need anything, you know, I'm here for them. One of the rookies that the Houston Texans have is um, Kenyon Green. You know, he came back to practice today. One, how great was it to see him back in practice? And two, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it kind of seemed like, you know, that is one of the rookies that you actually took under your wing. You know, prior to him getting injured, it seemed like you guys spent a lot of time together. Uh, yeah, man, Kenyon's going to do good, man. He's got a lot of high expectations here. Um, he knows that. Everybody knows that. So um, just putting him in the best situation. I know he asked me a couple times uh, certain rushes. That I've been beating him on or somebody and he'll ask me what he needs to get better at or what, what, what he saw and I'll tell him and just stuff he needs to work on uh, as far as you know just being a young player and getting getting in this league uh, and certain tendencies and stuff so like I said we're all here we're all a family man we're all mm-hmm. helping, uh, helping the young guys it's not just me you know it's everybody. Um, going into your third season, unfortunately, this is the third time that you're going to be um, dealt with a new head coach. You know, the first year, um, you know, Bill O'Brien let go, had an interim head coach last year was David Culley. Um, one, how special is it to know that it seems like finally this organization has an opportunity to have a, um, I don't want to say like a real coach, but like a, a true veteran coach that can actually lead this team. And two, how do you think you're going to be able to benefit from Lovey Smith yourself? Yeah, it feels good. Like, like I said, good teams, they need stability. They, mm-hmm. need, um, they need leaders. They need people who's going to set standards. And I think Lovey fits all those categories. You know, he's he's put in a certain standard, a standard in this uh, organization and he expects everybody to go by it. So if you ain't going to go by it, you ain't going to be here. So um, we didn't have that, you know, the past two years. Guys kind of just doing what they want to do, this, that, and the third. So you ain't going to win no football games like that. Mm-hmm. So once you got a guy that's going to establish a standard and how he wants things to run a certain way, uh, you either got a choice to respect it or don't. You know, at the end of the day, you're gonna play or you ain't gonna play. So I think Love, being, Coach Lovey being here is gonna be a big benefit for us. But stability is, is what we need. Mm. You came into the draft, draft class 2020, alongside John Gennard. How great has it been to see the growth in John Gennard over these last two years? Man, it's awesome, man. I, I can't wait for him to just really, to really just bloom and blossom. He already has, but it's getting a lot better, man. Just seeing the guy that I came in with. Uh, all the grinding that we've done together, all the talks that we had, it's just it's amazing. I love to see it, and I can't wait for his big breakout. Um, I'm going to be right there celebrating with him and with everybody, with everybody else. Last question before getting out of here. You are from Houston. Mm-hmm. You just say practice was hot. Do you ever get used to this heat, or does it seem like it's just get hotter and hotter as the years go on? It get hotter, man. <laughs> you ain't never going to get used to it, ever, ever. I, I lived here my whole life. I, I, 2016 is the hottest summer that I remember, and mm-hmm. this is maybe be a hotter summer. How do you deal with the heat? Because we be standing out here, as you see, alongside other medias, and it just be like, man, it's so hot. But like, we look on the field and we see you guys just working so hard. Like, how do you guys do it? At practice, I try to pre- pretend like I'm in Antarctica or something. <laughs> just my thing, man. It's all you gotta do, but you ain't gonna beat it, man. It's gonna it's either gonna beat you or you gotta beat it. Either way, you know. Awesome. Sounds good. Appreciate it, man. No problem, bro. The best part about that interview was, one, how honest Ross Blacklock was, as you guys heard. But two, and most importantly, it is hot in the city of Houston. The man is from Houston, and it's getting to the point where he like, look, first answer, it's hot. It's hot. Yeah, it's hot, too. And another, I was uh, out on Wednesday going to school to school because of my job. 
And I mm-hmm. had a suit on. Y'all should have saw your boy, right? Looking smooth. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I had a suit on, and I'm drenched in sweat, still trying to make it look cool and cute for the kids and everything. <laughs> Shout out to all the kids. But it is hot in the city of Houston. Uh, Cody, one thing that stuck out to me from that interview is I, I have to uh, I have to do it, man. Ross Blacklock in an interview said that you know, he wants to give the young guys the knowledge he has so far. Uh, he's not going to hold on to nobody. And any tools that he has, he'll share, which is something he wished he could have had. Mm-hmm. And uh, just, just kind of using that to point towards the uh, J.J. Watt, when J.J. Watt called him out in the national media, just saying, like, you know, what actually was going on that year to where we've never really heard young guys say, that they weren't able to kind of get some of the things that they wanted to get. But just kind of, you know, throwing it out there. One thing about Ross Blacklock to me, though, it does seem like he doesn't really need football. He always talks about uh, giving back and teaching, whether it's the younger guys or just talking about anything outside of football. He always mentions giving back and, and, and teaching and helping to learn and bring guys along. But overall, guys, there is something that Ross Blacklock does that I don't think shows up on the paperwork. Like when we look at the stats, it's not there, but you have to see it on the field. And Ross does, when he's playing well consistently, Ross does a very good job of gap integrity, making sure that he does his job. But overall, he does a very good job of making everybody else job around him, especially those linebackers. When he is playing good and consistently, making their jobs easier. So I think Ross makes the 53-man roster. I really hope he does. He's showing that those stat numbers won't show up, but he knows football, right? And knowing football and understanding that and how to win and help your team win is super valuable. Listen, guys, this can happen easily. You're out with your friends or coworkers. You're putting back a few drinks. A few becomes too many. It's time to go, and for a moment, you think about calling for a ride, and you're like, nah, you're a good driver. You live nearby, so it's not really a big deal. What are the odds you'll get pulled over? And even so, what's the worst that can happen? You lose your license, you lose your job, you total your car, kill someone. It only takes one mistake to change your life and someone's life forever. Play it safe. Go ahead. Get a ride. Drive sober. Don't get pulled over. Thanks for making Locked On Texas your first listen today. Now make Locked On Fantasy Football your second listen. Find the intellectual fantasy expert, Vinny Iyer, who brings over 20 years of NFL experience, expertise, excuse me, and a unique angle to give you the moves no one else has. Get ready for fantasy football with Locked On Fantasy Football. Cody. You know, sometimes as great as a job of a job that you do with these interviews, and you did a very good job with Ross. So sometimes I wish I could be there with you so I can just like kind of whisper things, sweet things in the air like slow life bang and all that much drunk. Drunk full of fuck. I ain't never been a punk. I blow on stuff. Oh yeah, y'all don't know about that, but we gotta talk about what's going on with the Houston Texans to close out. Lovey Smith talked about Derek Stingley playing in the preseason he said that yes and just as a general rule i'm not going to talk about playing time too much we're going to play some time play some of them a little bit more a lot of things we will wait right up until to give a you to give you a heads up uh in this preseason it doesn't make a whole lot of sense he's practiced full speed eventually he's going to play some this preseason do we finally see Derek stingley this friday I believe so, and it does make sense because, look, Stingley has played, participated in full practice for about, what, two weeks now, possibly three, Uh, but at the same time, this is a guy who has not played in a a full football game since September, and like I mentioned on yesterday, it's very important for him to get out there, rather that be this Friday, rather, especially next week against the San Francisco 49ers because he does have has to get up to game speed. So I, I do believe it's a realistic possibility that we see Derek Stingley out there on, on Friday against the Los Angeles Rams. I mean, even if it's for 
two, maybe three defensive drives. He has to get some type of playing time. The running back position is very interesting right now. Levy Smith was also asked about that group. Uh, the question specifically was, what are you looking for in running back Damian Pierce, Marlon Mack, Rex Burkhead when determining who's going to be the starting running back? I thought that was a very good question. And Lovey Smith responded with, I think you let the guys play. They kind of tell you who should start, who should be on the roster, how many guys, uh, how many plays should they get. We've been going through training camp practice. We've seen a lot, but to see guys finish – I thought that was a big game. Of course, we talked a lot about Damian Pierce. <laughs> of course, we talked a lot about Damian Pierce. Then you have a little history. Uh, then you have history a little bit, too, on what you've seen from some of the certain veteran players. Uh, it's good competition there. They all have certain strength. We'll let it play out. Here's a question to have. I think Houston really does love the relationship and cherish it with Rex Burkhead. Uh, you look at the similar styles with Damian Pierce and Marlon Mack. Is there a scenario where Houston kinds of move on from Marlon Mack? I don't think they should, but the similar playing style. You have Dare, who, again, you know, will continue to see what he can do for Houston. And Rex Burkhead, again, I mentioned that relationship. Or does it just set out Houston may carry four running backs on their roster this year? Because really quick, Dare may give them help in the return game as well. And Marlon yeah. Mack, who we've seen line up for returning kicks. Yeah, but not only that, you got to take a look at the reality of the situation. I do believe this is what separates Darray from the rest of those three guys. Darray's best attribute is a pass catcher coming out of the backfield. So, and you're talking about an offense that need help with their receiving core. So, I kind of feel like Darray's position on this 53 man roster is solidified. Um, Damian Pierce, look, <laughs> the man recorded. 9.8 yards per attempt Saturday against the New Orleans Saints. And if that does not screen starting running back come week one of the regular season, and yes, I understand it. I get it. You know, the New Orleans Saints, they did not have their best talent out there on the field for majority of the game. But at the same time, you can't deny the fact that Damian Pierce has looked like the best running back throughout training camp. Yes, Damian Pierce is the youngest. Damian Pierce has the least wear and tear on his body. Yes, and is. as of right now, he's looking like the most talented running back that the Houston Texans have. And if this is an organization that really want to go out there and put their best talent out there on the field, then he he definitely should be in consideration to be the starting running back come week one of the regular season. What brings me to the question that you just asked, John, do they carry four running backs or do they part ways with either Rex Burkhead and Marlon Mack? And as of right now, I'm going to say I, I truly do not know because Marlon Mack and Rex Burkhead, they both have have put together some very good practices throughout training camp. And as of right now, I say they're neck and neck. And I know you mentioned – Marlon Mack, he gives this team a boost in a return game, but at the same time, Rex Burkhead also give this boost, give this team boost with his veteran leadership. And you just heard, um, Re you just heard Ross Blacklock talk about how close knit in the camaraderie and the chemistry that this organization has inside that locker room. So uh, that that's a very interesting question, and and I don't know to be honest with you. I think Houston carries four running backs. I think. I think that here's one thing that I like about Damian Pierce. We look at his tough running, but I think what Saturday showed and what training camp has been showing is he is quick and he's quick enough still mm -hmm. at his early age, even as a rookie still has sophomore year wear and tear on his body because of the amount of carries or lack thereof. He got in Florida. He's still quick and he's able to take and maybe make something out of nothing. And so I think that really, bodes well for Houston's offense because what they want to do is still be in favorable positions, and I think that's because of their skill set and the players that they have on their roster. So Damian Pierce, I think, will become RB1 at the start of the season. Mm, well, uh, if it happens, man, I know when we signed Marlon Mack, I was preaching Marlon Mack for the longest, but after what I've been looking at training camp since July 31st, I wouldn't be mad at that. <laughs> Thank you guys for checking out. 
today's episode of the Locked On Texan podcast. Be sure to subscribe to Locked On Texans on YouTube. Find us under Locked On Texans. Just that simple. Also, follow us on Twitter at Locked On Texans and follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman 12. And as always, I'm your host, Cody Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody, C-O-T-Y-D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.